It's the Nuka Cola Lounge presented by the Triple S League. You were fighting the, you, flying guys last night. <laughs> Angels in the sky is what one of the guys called them. Angels um, in the sky. And it's funny because we managed to kill two of them. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Nuka Cola Lounge. We are at the Triple S League. I'm Ash, and I'm here as always with Saib. I'm Saib, and today we are talking about The Division. We have spent this past weekend immersing ourselves in the world of Tom Clancy's The Division, and uh, it's been quite an experience. It's It's been real fun. I'm about 75% with the game right now. There's some major issues which we'll cover, but I think on the whole, um, especially after learning about what was going on with the hacks and stuff like that. I'm more than willing to give them the benefit of the doubt, primarily because I've been so hard on Ubisoft in the past. So of course we're talking about the beta version of Tom Clancy's The Division, uh, which was released on January 28th for Xbox and January 29th for PC. Um, the beta ran through, I believe, February 2nd, unless they extend it again. And in that short span of time, there were already hackers flying around in the PvP area, literally flying around, weren't they? You said you were you were fighting they, flying guys last night. Angels in the sky is what one of the guys called them. Angels um, in the sky. And it's funny uh, because we managed to kill two of them. So these here these guys are hacking, unlimited skills, and unlimited like everything, and we still, eight of us, not a big group, just eight, uh, actually I think it was six, uh, managed to bring two of them down, two of the three hackers. Three guys were hacking, they were flying around, um, probably about five to six stories above us, bombing us and shooting us like crazy. And us six regular guys, three of us which weren't even in a group, managed to kill two of them. And they were upset in a very violent, angry way when they were finally killed. They were, um, screaming like toddlers in a store when they're told that they couldn't get their chocolate treat or whatever. <laughs> like it was, it, and they were like between 16 and 18, just judging on their voice. And they were exceptionally mad that they got killed by a bunch of people who weren't cheating. And it was really funny. <laughs> it, it was very, very funny. So hackers, just because somebody's hacking doesn't mean they're good. And well, if they were good, why would they need to hack? Yeah, well, that's the thing. So this brings us into our, our second point about the hacking, because this is what a lot of people are talking about. The No had a really good article, The No slash Rooster Teeth, about why it potentially didn't have any anti-cheat system in it to help improve general uh, connection and stability while they stress tested. It's really hard to to have an anti-cheat system running whilst also stress testing the servers basically. So you'd have a lot more disconnects, you'd have a lot more false positives, you'd have a lot more of those kinds of issues. So there's a strong possibility that the, that the cheater system is already going to be fixed. And what they've done by allowing the cheaters to kind of get access and, and write programs and, and hack the thing, they'll know for launch the things and the tools and the ways that they're going to use. So right away, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to turn on those cheats day one, get into the game, and 30 seconds later be banned from the game and lose their, you know, their 80 bucks that they spent on the game, lose that completely. Hmm. And that's a really good idea. That's a really strong stand against cheating in any big multiplayer game. Cheating drives down the game and makes the game not fun and people don't want to play it so that's bad for ubisoft if they let that continue mm -hmm. so the, the goal here is to create a really stable game i'm for the most part um i'm going to give ubi the benefit of the doubt for now on this because it does make sense they haven't come out and said it specifically yet but i mean this is also something that they have to fix like they absolutely have to fix this as far as the cheating aspect, as far as the hacking aspect, it was not super major for me. I was only ever killed by a cheater once when I didn't know where he was. I was standing out in the middle of the open and I kept getting shot and I thought I was getting shot by NPCs and I was looking in the wrong places. Once I figured out that there were hackers and what they were doing, then I just ran. I just ran through buildings and around corners 
and I lost them in about 10 seconds. So, yeah, because there's nothing else you can do. I mean, yeah, and the thing with running, even when you're running away from hackers, hackers have to use these wall hacks, which do take a few seconds for them to get through the wall. So, as, as soon as you put a few walls between you and them, you're moving at a pace that they can't keep up with. Mm -hmm. And then, if they were to, you know, make some kind of hack that made them move a lot faster, they'd have an even bigger problem trying to shoot you whilst running at super speed. So, yeah. Well, hopefully that's hopefully these aren't issues that we'll have to deal with when the full release version comes out. So let's talk about the general PvP experience in the game. It differs from... It's different than most shooters. It, it, it is. It's very... It's completely free-for-all. You can kill anybody you see. You can attack anybody you see. You can be fighting with a group of eight people, all strangers, all not in parties, all, you know, just solo guys... You can see a group of rogues and manhunt guys and, and run over and just take them all out. And then you can immediately turn on each other. And then, you know, you can turn on your friends. And then, you know, if you are in a group, you can leave the group. And then you can turn on your group. And it's it's a madhouse. It is. It's a madhouse. People are going to be able to take advantage of it. Right now, uh, an easy way to hack the, the game, I think, is going to be get a group of your friends all go into one corner of the dark zone and all stand there shooting each other. Uh, don't kill each other, just just shoot each other. And then all get flagged up, and then you all just sit there, and you wait for your timers to go down, and you get points for surviving. If anybody shows up to try and kill this group of red characters, they'll just get annihilated by them, and then you just do it again. And you can get 200 dark zone points per minute in this kind of scenario. And I think that that's... I think that that's really bad. <laughs> well, it, it, it seems like this area is designed for players to turn on each other. You get bonuses yeah. for being a rogue. You get bonuses for killing rogues. The entire premise of the Dark Zone is you go in, you kill people, you take their stuff. And you get their stuff to the extraction point. And if you survive that, then the stuff gets out and goes into your stash in the main area of the game. So... The Dark Zone, it's just this anarchist mess. It's, it's There's no also, structure to it whatsoever. It's also really fair to note that my best gear came from buying my Dark Zone loot and not picking it up. So, yeah, you can run around, pick up stuff, and, and send it up. Or you could just get in a group of people and just shoot each other, heal up, and then just wait out the timer, and then shoot each other, heal up wait out the timer and that gives you dark zone currency and that gives you dark zone currency oh, if you survive i thought it was experience if you survive your timer you get dark zone currency based on how long you manage to survive so you kill like five or six players and you get manhunt status and then you live to the point where you survive that you get a massive amount of currency hmm. and this is where, I mean, just by standing in a group and shooting each other, the only way kind of around this is going to be you can't shoot, you can't kill people on your friends list or people in your guild. To eliminate that, though, that does kind of take away, I think, from what they were going for with the Dark Zone, which is just this real feeling of not being able to trust anybody. And that was an interesting exercise, something I'd never experienced before. I mean, it's different than... Like, you have your online shooters where it's just free-for-all and you're just trying to kill everybody. Or you have your team-based matches, and you still can't trust your teammates, but, yeah. you know, those types of games usually have things in place to punish team killers. But this, this is kind of like the teams are so fluid, at any time anyone could turn on you. Or you're running down an alley and there's another guy running down the other way and you've both got your guns pointed at each other, and you don't know if the other guy's gonna try and take you out and he doesn't know if you're gonna take him out or you just never know it's this mental exercise in reflexes and stress judging other people's <laughs> actions which is not easy to do when they're just controlling a computer avatar basically to sort of read their body language but you kind of have to like yeah. just the most subtle things indicating oh this guy's about to attack me of course then you attack him first and you suddenly you're marked rogue and then he gets a yep. big bonus if he manages to kill you, and it's just mind. They do have this system in the game, which I did discover a little bit later. You only get flagged rogue if you do a certain amount of damage 
to somebody. So if like somebody runs into your line of fire, you not necessarily flag rogue. But what does happen, which is really dumb and really frustrating, is that when you when somebody does run into your line of fire and they take one or two bullets, you're not classified as rogue yet, but yet everybody around you who's not in your team suddenly has a red bar above their head. And they now look like an enemy. And this is what was causing a lot of confusion. A lot of people thought that, you know, the second they, somebody like, shot them once or twice that that person was now rogue because that person's red to them they start shooting that person they get the rogue and then that person kills them and then they lose a lot of their stuff and that's where a lot of frustration was coming from so you have to remember that the system was set up in a bad way that wasn't explained at all that was really tough to understand and then of course you enter in this this next thing which is because it takes a certain amount of damage, people with sniper rifles and um, shotguns, oh, well, you only have to take one hit from them in order to flag them as rogue. That happened so to me. If, that happened to me. I was with a yeah. an entire group. I had the sniper rifle, and a uh, guy ran in front of me right as I was about to take a shot. Boom. Suddenly I'm rogue. And thankfully, they were nice enough to just let me run off and, and wait it out. Yeah. Like I was sure I was going to get shot in the back on the way out, but I think they realized, though, that was a mistake. But... They could have. They could have just turned on me and killed me and gotten yeah. a bonus for that. And I heard a lot of people complaining about this because you can hear their mics and you can hear them when they're talking. And a lot of them were really frustrated because they didn't understand why, you know, somebody was shooting them and they weren't being flagged. And then they defended themselves and then they're flagged, they're rogue, then they lose, then they lose all their stuff. And it was a really frustrating experience for a lot of people who didn't really understand what was going on because there was absolutely no welcome to the dark zone. This is what happens and this is how you get flagged. This is exactly the process. And then because of the way that the points were distributed by either surviving rogue status or by doing stuff like that, ultimately nobody cared about items because their best items were bought, not picked up. Yeah. And this was the other thing that was frustrating to a lot of people when you first got in there and I got in there in the first couple of hours and yes blue item drops were great until I hit level eight and could buy epics then blue item drops were like what do I want a blue for <laughs> my entire character is completely epic up I was entirely purple I had a purple sidearm and all my inventory was purple all of it was health based and this is another trick Go health based. If you're going to the DZ, go as much health as you can possibly get. That's your dark zone set because that's just how much damage you take. And, you know, if somebody's trying to kill you and you're running, you have a higher chance of survival if you just keep on running and you have a crap ton of hit points. Hmm. There were some people who went like entirely damage build, but they still couldn't kill me quickly. And me as a tank spec with a a uh, huge machine gun with 133 ammo capacity per clip. I got into a lot of fights with a lot of people who were 100% damage build, who I would shred in a few seconds. And they would do maybe like half of my health and damage because heals are really strong too and that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, well, I, I wonder though if the damage build would have benefited me a little bit more just because I am more of a sniper rogue type. Yeah. But I, I would line a guy up, headshot, wouldn't kill him. Shoot three or four more times, still wouldn't kill them. By this point, they know exactly where I am, so they come running at me. You know, I switch to my SMG, and we get into sort of a close-range battle, and inevitably I would lose. Yeah. Because I just couldn't do the damage. And so I wonder if, like, yes, in close quarters... If you're walking around with a sniper rifle and SMG as your primary weapon, some combination of those things, then your high damage build works and is kind of needed in order to make your build work. If you're walking around with an assault rifle, a machine gun, or a shotgun, and your full health build, you're almost always going to come out on top. Because there were not that many abilities, we don't know how the abilities are going to factor into it. Yeah. And they only had four abilities unlocked and two of them were crap. But in the in the full game, once the full game comes out, you build on that super high-end ability damage. And you're likely to see a metric ton of damage. I was looking at some of those abilities that I could. 
and the grenade one, for example, the BFB, which stands for Big Effing Bomb, attachment to the, the sticky grenade, it did more than my tank's health and damage. In my full tank build, I had almost 8,500 health. So that's some of the number differences, but you couldn't unlock that ability in the beta, so we don't know how the how the actual damage translates, right? That is the thing. This is, this is just the beta, so it's difficult to predict how, how things are going to play out in the full release version because, yeah, the Dark Zone can be a frustrating experience or it can be a, Lots of fun. a fun experience, depending on how you do it. I mean, the most fun thing for me was rogue hunting. Yeah. Just, just something really satisfying about hunting these guys down and taking them out. Now, of course, again, like I said, I don't think my build was quite right for hunting. I think I should have gone more damage than health. But again, when the different abilities are unlocked and when all the different stats and perks are available, it could be completely different. So it's hard to judge based on the beta how well things are balanced. But based just on sort of the concept of the game, the snapshot that, they were, that we were given in the beta, how would you rate it? Well, the PvE was, when you actually had missions to do, was fun and interesting. And there were very well done cinematics. I'd say if you're looking for a PvE shooter with really good character customization and unique abilities and, and brings in the multiplayer fun aspect of doing a multiplayer mass effect, which is really what it kind of felt like in a lot of cases. Even the sound and the visuals kind of was like, oh, this is so like mass effecty with all the glowy skills and abilities and stuff. It felt very good and very fun. And if you're a pve -er and you're not going to do the Dark Zones, this is definitely a must pick up game because I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to give you a lot of hours of fun with your friends, doing the missions, doing the, the main storyline. The mobs were interesting. We only saw a very small cut of them. Like there's going to be drones. There's going to be other things. They, they keep hinting at this big dark reveal. So we don't know if there's going to be things like zombies or mutants or stuff like that. We don't know that yet. But even with the Rikers and the uh, cleaners, there was a large variety of types of enemies. There's these guys called cowboys where they'll run right up to you with their gun and just start shooting everywhere. And then there's these guys who are, you know, they chuck grenades and then other guys will lay down suppressing fire and then other guys, their, their AI is very, very good. Not the best that it could be, but it is very, very good for the technology that we have today. And I think it works and I'm, I'm really impressed with it. The PVP, I'm giving it a 50%. And that's because I don't know where they're going with it. I think the way that they've been trying to do it and then the way that they've been trying to push it when nobody's really been asking for this kind of a thing was a really big gamble. It could pay off or you could lose a big chunk of your audience to do it this way. So PVE, 100%. PVP, 50%. So my score, my end score is 75%. At least that's mitigated a bit by the fact that they have a fairly well realized PVE world to play in yeah and you don't have people just sort of invading that and ruining your fun no. the pvp is optional you know you don't have to go into the dark zone you don't have to go and fight other players um they also hid the crafting and they also hid the talents and perks and i don't like it when mmos hide stuff close it off give you zero access because that's very disconcerting you don't know if they're going to be just scrapping it all or like what what their plan with it does it even work is it balanced you have no ability to to do the math on that stuff and with the perks and with the talents and with the skills that was something that that was missing so i couldn't do the math on that stuff and i was really disappointed because i don't know whether it, it works or not but from what i saw it's going to be fun for you and me and you know a couple friends at the very least to play through the whole story. It's really a game that's built for multiplayer, so I would say definitely if you're going to get this game, try to get one of your friends to get it so you guys can play together. Uh, that's that's definitely the way to go about it. I did a few missions on my own and they were still fairly fun, but 
you have to be everything as opposed to having, you know, a tank and a sniper or something like that. Some of our you know, co-op missions that we did together, you know, they were a lot of fun and we had some excellent tactics with you running in and drawing everybody's fire and, you know, me picking them off from a distance. And also just being able to cover each other's backs because if one of your guys goes down, well, someone else can heal them. So just a lot of reasons to play this game multiplayer. It's a lot of fun, both in the single player campaign and in the Dark Zone. Graphically, I thought it was beautiful. The gloomy, snowy, overcast environment was was really, uh, really a great setting for this game. And uh, the world is very interactive. The game mechanics are very smooth. A few glitches, like occasionally getting stuck on a tiny ledge that you can't jump off for some reason just because they forgot to program it it's like it's like a foot high it's like a foot high i would get stuck on these uh, tiny little ledges I can't that jump off this edge oh dear and, and so you you couldn't even dive roll off it you just somersault in place so a few broken things that hopefully they will they will fix that kind of comes with cover based shooters uh there's a lot of that kind of thing happening doing roly polioles in front of a wall <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I am very, very sad that they don't have a jump key. And I'm very, very sad that they don't have a crouch key. That is... Um, Other than that... That, that was weird, yeah. It, it was weird. It was my only two real big disappointments with the UI. Um, anybody who's complaining that the, the key mapping is dumb, um, you can redo all that. So... If that's your reason for not enjoying the game because, oh, my controls were dumb, then, you know, learn how to remap your keys. I'd be able to remap It's the not keys. that hard. I had, well, I mean, you know. I mean, yeah. there are so many, how many times would I, did I try to crouch behind something and wind up jumping on top of it? And end up vaulting over like, it. Oh, right? so, I'll, be I'll be swapping those two keys because spacebar is jump, damn it. I don't care if it's a real jump or just a... You know, hop on top of this obstacle, jump. Space bar is jump. Control is crouch. End of story. Stop messing <laughs> with yeah. that. But anyway, beyond that, I mean, and that's user error to a large extent. But yeah. um, since we're talking about UI, uh, my big disappointment with the game was the general UI, the menu system, the map, all that stuff. I found very clunky and very confusing. And that's my biggest gripe about the game was figuring out how the hell to use the map and find my quests. Give me a list of quests. Like, I don't want to be looking all over the map to find, you know, oh, there's there's something I can go and do. Well, give me a list that I can click on and then, or give me both options so I can see them on the map if I want mm -hmm. or I can see a list of them. And this is, this is definitely a user preference kind of thing. I enjoyed the fact that I, I could pull up my map and I could zoom in and I could very carefully go over the area and go, oh, I just found a chest that I haven't opened that's got upgradable loot in it. Oh, okay, well, I'm definitely, you know, mark that on my map. But you have to actually, like, go through the map with a fine-tooth comb versus just looking at a, a glance thing. So I enjoyed that aspect of the game. You didn't... Well, I'm not saying that's a bad thing either. It's, it's more of it's a... It's not a bad thing. It's no, just if the there's stuff, not... like, it pops up, you know, quest available. Or mission available. Okay, where the hell is it? You have to look all over your frickin' map. Unless there's something in the menu there that I didn't find. But like I said, I found it very clunky and confusing. So, yeah, once I got the hang of the using the map, it, it is useful. But it's also very easy to click on the wrong thing. Also, their GPS system, or their pathfinding system, or where it guides you on your HUD. Yeah, where, there's where one or two problems go, with it. There were a couple of points where it was trying to send me through a solid wall that you can't get through or just constantly looping. I, I had the looping problem. The looping problem, yeah. I ran around in a circle twice before I was like, I ran through here twice now, looked on my map, saw my trail. I'm like, yep, I just ran a giant circle twice. <laughs> Screw you. Or if, it, if there was an item you're trying to find that's like in the back corner of a building on the third floor, the GPS might send you to the back of the building in the alley where there's no door. And from there, well, you're on your own. Good luck finding this thing. Go around front and then figure out which building it's in. A few issues with that, but overall, I'm, I'm with you. The single player, I, I 
I wouldn't give it 100%, but I would give it probably an 85, and then the Dark Zone, probably a 50 as well, because it, it is fun, certain aspects of it are fun. It's an interesting premise, but it's hard to understand why it's there. Mm -hmm. If you're going from sort of an immersion standpoint, really getting into your character's head, why are you going to the Dark Zone? Just yeah. to fight people over stuff? You know, it just... I don't know. Maybe in the full version of the game, that'll become clearer. Maybe the Dark Zone will have more to it than it has currently. But right now, it just seems like just a multiplayer shooter that can't decide if it's team-based or free-for-all. Mm -hmm. Something was off about it. But like I said, the fun thing was, was hunting rogues, which is very difficult because the rogues are only rogue for so long. And then even if you see a guy who was rogue before, well, you attack them, you're rogue. So you have a time limit in which you can take them out, and it's uh, they're usually in groups, and then you never know when the mm -hmm. people in your group are going to turn on you, and that happened a few times. So it's bizarre. You have to have a lot of patience with it at first. Yeah. But like you said, the point of it seems to be getting loot, but even that starts to seem pointless after a while because then you can just buy better loot. So your focus becomes killing people to get Dark Zone points. It just feels unfinished, I guess is what I'm trying to say feels like an unfinished part of the game, which it very well may have been because it was just a beta. Yeah, no, I completely agree um, with the Dark Zone stuff. So that, that comes out to about a 71% buy suggest, I guess, between the two of us. Sounds about right, yeah. I'm going to highly recommend that if you are wanting to do this game, and you are wanting to do this game in a PvP sense, you definitely need a large guild with people that you know aren't going to stab you in the back. If you want to have fun, a big organized group is definitely the way to go. Um, definitely suggest that. And we actually have a guild that you can find some info on. It's called X Inferno. And you go to xinferno.com for information. There's a handy little button to just join the servers, uh, TeamSpeak, and there's forums and whatnot. It is a large guild, and it's a large gaming guild, meaning that, that they play multiple types of games. So you can play whatever you want, and you don't necessarily have to show up and do something every week, you know, that kind of thing. I think that will help with the PvP experience. Yeah. Having yeah. people you know you can rely on and aren't going to stab you in the back. Just grouping up with random people on the street. It's basically like it would be grouping up with random people on the street if this were in real life. You just yeah. don't know. Are they going to be assholes? Are they not? Yeah. So, yeah, no, check them out. Uh, we're going to have a link in the description for that. Other than that, stay tuned. We've got uh, we've got one or two more videos coming on The Division, and then we'll have a bunch once the game gets live or the next beta. So thanks for listening, and uh, let us know what you think if you've played the beta or what you think if you've watched videos on it and whether or not you'll be uh, buying the game. On behalf of Saib, my name is Ash. This has been the Triple S Podcast from the Nuka-Cola Lounge, and we will talk to you again soon. Thanks so much for watching our video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Those things help us out a lot. Also, check out some of our other content. In our mod review series, we did an interview with Caliente, one of the leading Skyrim modders, about her new work for Fallout 4. We also have a guide to Fallout 4's most peaceful ending and a series on how to make lore-friendly Nuka-Cola.